What's good, y'all? What's the numbers TV? It's your boy, Poe Rowe. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And like the video if you appreciate the content that Poe Rowe and What's the Numbers I provided. Today, we back another profile piece. This one is on D-Boy. In this video, we're going to talk about his early years growing up in Ohio. After that, we'll look at his reputation and well-known name in the streets for various activities. Then, we'll focus on his love for music that led D-Boy to start his own music label before finally breaking down the crazy situation surrounding his death. Dante Cordell Edwards, better known as D-Boy, is from Dayton, Ohio, and was the oldest of three children. Dayton back in the day was a big industrial city that Forbes magazine had as one of the best places to live, but over time, just like a lot of other American cities, it became kind of run down in certain areas. D-Boy and his family was from the rough side of Dayton. His mother was hooked on drugs during D-Boy's childhood, forcing him to be in foster homes and eventually jail during his adolescent and early adult years. While bouncing around from place to place during his childhood and teenage years, D-Boy fell in love with music and even pursued being a rapper for a bit before deciding to go the CEO route. He also got into the streets a bit as a hustler, who over time became successful to the point where he was able to offer those around him opportunities, some in the streets, others through some of his legitimate businesses that he started. The main one being a music label called Grown Man Records, where his title was owner and CEO. Now, D-Boy was known to move around a bit, spending some time on the West Coast in California and also in Atlanta, Georgia, where he ended up relocating to for a while. He kept his roots in Dayton, though, and had a few local rappers signing his label. A group named the Doughboy Mafia was making a little noise in the city and were probably his biggest artists on the label at the time. Now, sometime throughout his hustling journey in the streets, D-Boy came into contact with BMF, a.k.a. the Black Mafia Family, which was a drug organization that was trying to break into the music game. He became so involved with the crew that he got BMF tatted on his neck while living in Atlanta. Although not one of the main members that we heard about, D-Boy was a big deal to his supporters in Dayton and was involved in BMF's drug side of things to a certain extent according to law enforcement. Things with BMF started to hit the fan in December 2005 when the first wave of indictments started coming out. D-Boy wasn't on those indictments, but by 2007 he was on the run and was being looked for by the feds after a warrant came out for his arrest on drug trafficking charges. Rather than turn himself in, D-Boy would go on the run, leaving his homes in Atlanta and Dayton, instead choosing to bounce around from state to state. In the spring of 2007, he ended up in Detroit, a place flooded with original BMF members. Maybe he was lured there by others, under the assumption that he would be safe out there, or maybe he was just taking care of some business and passing through. Whatever his reason was for being in Detroit, we will never know. Because on April 15, 2007, Detroit police recorded an anonymous 911 call, which led to the discovery of D-Boy's dead body along a freeway on the west side of Detroit. Whoever killed him cut off his hands, shot him in the head, and set fire to his remains, making the course difficult to identify. The body was burnt so bad that it took over a year before the police were able to positively identify it as being D-Boy. Until that confirmation, the remains had been in the city morgue, tagged as an unidentified homicide victim, even though D-Boy's mom had filed a missing person report over a year earlier. In fact, DNA was available from the body at the crime scene in 2007, but according to Detroit police who spoke to D-Boy's wife, Department funding problems prevented DNA analysis until 2008, although they admit it should have been done sooner. Once D-Boy's remains were released, he was returned to Dayton, Ohio, where his funeral took place. It drew a large crowd of mourners with friends and family, as D-Boy was just 31 years old at the time of his death. But show us what's the numbers TV is a quick profile piece on Dante Cordell Edwards, better known as D-Boy BMF, Grown Man Records. They in Ohio. Now, if you've been watching the BMS series, you see they branched out to Ohio early. So, is that how D-Boy met BMF early on? Or did he meet him in Atlanta? Now, Meech was like 40-something when he got locked up. I think he was 40, 40, just pushing 40 or something like that. I'm not sure. So, D-Boy was 31, so he was younger. So, obviously, he wasn't running with Meech and them. You know, young, young. Maybe he was. Who knows? I don't know exactly how it went. I'll be lying if I tell you. But, you know. In the show, it shows him branching out to Ohio, D-Boy from Ohio. Now, he ended up moving to Atlanta. He had BMF tatted on his neck. You understand? So he was definitely part of the mob. 
Now, was he meat shot at Terry side? Being that he's in Atlanta, he probably meat shot. But, you know, you could do some digging. It's not too much out there on him. But, you know, this is something I wanted to talk about because this is a BMF member that nobody talks about. He got killed. Now, there's another BMF member that got killed not to, after not count Baby Blue happened during the time. But, you know, Pig, Triplet, BMF Pig, he got killed also. But that was later on. That was after he went to jail and came home, you know what I'm saying? And he got he ended up dying in the, in the trap and he got shot. Now, this is another one, but his, 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 um, the circumstances around D-Boy's death is a little, you know, a little more complicated as far as they chopped his hands off. Now, was that a, was, then they, they, they shot him in the head, they burned him on fire, right? Was that just because they didn't want people to find out who it was or DNA, or was that because sending a message? Sometimes they say when they chop your hands off, you were stealing, right? Come to find out he was wanted. On a federal drug charge As far as like Some type of indictment I don't know if it was related To the BMF or not But he he had ended up Recently being Wanted by the feds Now was this a situation Of you know A lot of people Was telling at that time It was 2007 When he died A lot of people Was already telling Being that BMF Initially got locked up At 05 07 was like The second and third Wave of indictments So Was Was they just Trying to kill him To make sure he don't tell was the chopping of his hands a message as far as that like, he might have did some shady th- shady stuff, so stealing or just running his mouth? Who knows? But sometimes you got to look a little deeper than, you know, the, what's on the surface. Or was it a robbery backdoor situation? You know what I'm saying? Was he out there trying to get straight or, you know, you know, cop some work or, you know, he on the run. So was he out there trying to move around, you know, and, and get put up somewhere? Or else the people that he thought was allies and they decided to rob him could have been that situation. We don't know. But other than that, you know, he was an entrepreneur. You know, he had businesses. He had a record label. You know, the typical, you know, getting a couple dollars. You know, we we, we usually, hip-hop is usually entangled in our life from an early age. And, you know, sometimes the, the easiest thing to do when you got some money in street dude is, you know, try to get make it in hip-hop. Even though nowadays, I think after, after seeing so many people go to jail and not be successful, and I think people are, you know, investing their money in different things, which is a great thing. But back then, you know, Hip hop was definitely a big thing. If you got some money, you wanted a label. You know, BMF had a label. D Boy had a label. You know, there's a bunch of things going on. There's a couple dudes that was, I think, J Rock, who was, um, you know, Sin City Mafia, but he was related to old BMF, so he had a label. You know, there's a lot of music things going on back then. Still to this day, but, you know, if you had some money back then, that was one of the first things you do was get a music label. But, like I said, man, I just want to touch on this video. It's the only place you're going to see a profile piece or any type of. You know, dialogue or just some type of information on D-Boy, Dante Edwards out of BMF, out of Ohio, Grown Man Records. So, you know, we're the only one with it. You know, you know What's Numbers TV, we like being exclusive with the content. You know, content that you can't get with nowhere, nowhere else. We just hit 88,000 subscribers. We're on our way to 100K, man, 12,000 to go. Tell a friend to tell a friend. You know, sometimes the best promotion is word of mouth. Subscribe to the channel. And before you know it, we'll be back, man. It's What's Numbers TV. Follow on Instagram. Follow my partner, Batty Bills on IG. Subscribe to the, to the Clips channel. Also, we got the Column Street Chopo mixtape on the way. Stay tuned for that. You know what I'm saying? We got a lot coming. What's Numbers TV 2023, man? Polro. What's Numbers TV? We out of here, man. Peace.